Welcome being the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. This season, we're embarking on a journey of personal ref- I am so sorry. <laughs> you want to start over? <laughs> Let's just keep going. Hey, everyone. We're embarking on this journey of personal growth and reflection, literally reflection right now going, what in the heck are you doing? We, as always, use our good and bad experiences, friendship, and passions to inspire thought-provoking conversation and soul-driven advice. Do what I say, not what I do. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to better help you create a life worth living and step more brightly into yourself inch by inch. You know what, Amy, for how abruptly we ended the last episode, I think this is a really appropriate way to start the next one. <laughs> I love it that you said that. You know, we um we came right up on the 40 minute mark last time. And we, we uh, record this uh, on a platform that we choose not to pay for. So it boots you at 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hence our now shorter episodes from season one. <laughs> um, and we don't always pay attention to time. Usually we just, uh, uh, we just trust. <laughs> we trust in the plan that we made. <laughs> and our ability to follow it. <laughs> um, but so, yes, we did kind of end abruptly uh, the last episode. And and I just wanted to um, actually thank uh, people who reached out to me after this last week's episode. Um, if you haven't listened to it, uh, you, you know, you might want to. But so I wanted to thank them. And I want to let everyone know I'm okay, right? I'm okay. I had uh, the privilege, well, the right to make that choice um, when I did. And then later to make the choice to to choose to have children. So I I feel very privileged. um, And and so I just wanted to say that. (laughs) And if all this seems in like a bit of intrigue and secrecy, that's because you have to go and listen to the episode to hear us rush to a a grand finale finish. (laughs) And I'm so happy people are able to hear you um, for what you were sharing and for why Mm -hmm. you were sharing it and just the quick and last minute um, time we had for it. Um, And that, yeah, if, if anybody's interested, it's a great episode, episode 133 on choice. Yeah. And so it's interesting that you said something right now about planning. Yeah. Um, this episode is 333 on the clock right now, just so everyone knows that when we're recording. was go- I was going to uh, do notes on journey, like the twists and turns of your personal journey, right? And um, But something happened at the beginning of this week. So Monday was President's Day, and I had it off. I believe you had it off as well, Tracy. Mm -hmm. And I had all these marvelous plans for what I was going to do on President's Day. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to organize this and edit that. And I'm going to put my little laptop in a bag and I'm going to go to a coffee house and just get, just write and do all these things, right? I I was ready. I, oh man, I, I was just so excited for the day ahead. Now, luckily in the morning, I did get started on a couple things right away, but soon after (laughs) my first cup of coffee, I got a phone call from my father-in-law and um, he couldn't get a, he was trying to get a hold of my husband, but my husband was at work. So he goes into this long story about how he woke up and he was dizzy and seeing double and he called urgent care and urgent care said, well, if you come here, we'll just send you in an ambulance to the emergency room. And then he's going on and on. And finally I said, shorty, do you want me to take you to the emergency room? Well, yeah, if you could, you know, if you could, but then I'm worried because then Joni will be home alone. So I said, I can take you to the emergency room and then come back and stay with 
with my mother-in-law, right? Yeah. So I got dressed, hopped in my car, went and picked him up. And then as we're driving to the emergency room, he's telling me how he hasn't actually felt good for a couple of weeks and that um, it's been going on for a while. And so I said very calmly, I'm like, have you called the doctor? Well, you can't get in to see a doctor. And I'm thinking, well, you're going in to see a doctor right now, aren't you? But he, he just said, well, you can't get in to see a doctor. And I said, well you know, sometimes they have openings for things like this. He goes, well, you know, Joni, I can't leave Joni alone. So my mother has, uh, my mother-in-law has um, Alzheimer's and a um, little bit of dementia. And, and uh, so he's worried about her, but he says, well, I can't leave her alone. Lori, my sister-in-law's in Mexico. And, you know, I, she can't be left at home and this and that and the other thing. And meanwhile, we're still driving to the emergency room. And so I said, I feel like you might be using Joan as an excuse to not just oh. take care of your Uh yeah yeah I know and I don't know that detective work Amy yeah but it still was like it felt like the emergency room was his plan that was the plan yeah that was his plan uh just get it taken care of in the meantime so I got him dropped off I went back in the meantime my his grandson um, Austin came by and was there as well. So I was there with them for a while. And then I actually went home and put things away that I had started to pull out (laughs) and then got a call from shorty and, you know, was about ready. They couldn't, they did these tests. They couldn't find anything. They said, I could go take your time. I said, okay. In the meantime, I had left my car at my in-laws house. They live just a few blocks away. So I finished doing a few things, walked back down, said hello again to Joan and Austin, got in my car, drove to the emergency room. And he said, don't park. I'll be waiting out front. And he wasn't there. So I went, okay, I'll just, I'll give him a call. Hey, shorty. He goes, oh, are you here? I went, Uh, yeah. He goes, Oh, you left too soon. I'm like, okay, well I can drive around or whatever. It's not a big deal. He goes, yeah, I don't even have my IV out yet. So I'm thinking, okay, okay. I'm not in sync with, with this, with this person. I end up going to a mall close by and just walking, right? I'm just going to get my steps in while I'm waiting. So I'm walking He calls again, doctors want to give him another test. So now I drive back to, and let Austin and and Joan know this. In the meantime, you know, all these other things happen. The short version is he spends the night at the hotel, at the hotel, at the hospital. (laughs) Austin has spent almost all day with Joan. He got them both dinner. I pack a bag and I go there and, and Austin leaves and I'm now there at, to spend the night. Right. So I am there and, um, my mother-in-law keeps saying if it, well, you know what they say, if you want to make God laugh, tell them about your plans. And she said it like, three different times, not right after the other. Yeah. And it got me thinking about the entire day and life and how things happen. And so I decided I'd rather talk about plans and planning today. And that whole long story was because not only did I have a plan, but other people had plans too. And we all kind of collided. And then my mother-in-law who has dementia and Alzheimer's is like, well, if you want to make God laugh, tell them about your plans. And at first I was really like, "Mm, I don't believe that. I didn't say that to her. Yeah. 
but so it's triggering me too. I'm triggered. I yeah. So how I interpret that phase phrase personally is to just you know be open to possibility, right? Um, so kind of if if you you're trying to manifest a windfall of money, don't like overly expect it to come in one way because you know exactly. God's gonna give it to you in a different right. Right. Um, maybe right. you were just like, hey. I, I want to Scrooge McDuck into some, you know, or whatever it is, into a pile of gold and just be able to call it mine. And here he's like, has you meet the love of your life? And that person happens to be wealthy, right? Like, right. You know, it, wouldn't that be a grand world, right? So that's how I've always interpreted it. So when people, when people behave as such in your story, all it makes me think about is, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yes. So <laughs> I also have family members uh, who um, need to rely on the help of family for just because of age or health related issues. Um, but in their desire to not be a burden, they put things off. They communicate at the last minute and it ends up exactly how you just described taking the person's entire day um and then other people who have to then do other things right their day whereas if you would have just told me three weeks ago you had a doctor's appointment you might need a ride I could have planned my day around that and instead course, of getting a call the morning of your right. ride didn't show up right well or and you he weren't can gonna get drive there. himself yeah. it's that he was dizzy feeling dizzy yeah. right oh, but yeah. I could have said oh, I'll stay with Joan, right? I, there were yeah. all kinds of things that could have happened. Exactly. But had, like you said, had he just had maintenance doctor's appointments, preventative care, regular check-ins, calling at the first sign of something wrong, this maybe could have been a small but planned inconvenience in everybody's day <laughs> instead of an all-day thing. But, you know, to to her point, right, like, it's one of those like, oh, we can't get mad, Amy, that your plans are ruined because plans are whatever. But had you not made a plan for yourself that day and that none of that had happened, would you have been productive? Right. Like, right. So to me, my family views me as a planner, as you described both of us early on with the show and other stuff. A lot of people would describe me as a planner. But to people who don't plan things, they view me as controlling when I feel like a plan gives me freedom because I'm now aware of every possible option as much as one can be so that when stuff comes up like you just described, I'm ready for that, right? Like, So I feel that I, well, first of all, I've always loved the idea of planning. When I was little, my sisters would be like, come on, let's make a plan. And that was always like, Ooh, the really cool, like mysterious, like, yeah. Ooh, how are we going to run away from home? Which we never did. Um, and we didn't want to, but making the plan to do it was fun. But in the, I would say in my early years, I was not a good planner or a planner. Like I didn't see the, I felt like it was much more freedom freeing to just kind of just spur of the moment, do whatever you feel like doing, right? And it wasn't until I got older that I realized exactly what you just said, that there's freedom in that planning. Mm -hmm. And I think a part of that, a lot of that had to do with, with Rick is because he is a planner. He wants everything planned out. You, you know, I've said this before yeah. on the podcast. He's the one who says, it's fine to be spontaneous as long as you're prepared for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so, so, but the freedom comes from knowing you have a plan and a step. I want to go back to something that you said, if you hadn't made plans for that day and you didn't get that phone call, would you have accomplished anything or done anything? Yeah. No, I would have frittered it away. And I will say, even though I had those different interruptions and breaks, I still got things done because yeah. I did have a plan. So I got smaller things done. And also my mother-in-law actually was not saying it to me because she thought that my plan oh, absolutely had ruined for that day. I don't think she was aware of <laughs> yeah. that. I think she was just, you know, it was because Shorty yeah. now was 
spending the night in the hospital, right? Yeah, and their routine was messed up. Yeah, you know, for me, especially when it comes to family things. Um, so one of my sisters just had a baby and it was going to be a scheduled birth, but you could pop at any time, right? Like, so <laughs> I knew, I, I mean, I'm the backup plan for the backup plan for the child care for the family, but I was like, okay, if she does go into labor early, there's a lot of moving pieces in our family. You know, she has other kids and other people who help her. Also, they have other, they have their own plans and they have their own things. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I was like, I'm going to take Friday off beforehand. Um, I'm going to do all my errands. I'm going to get all this stuff done, all my routine things. I'm going to get all this stuff done so that if I am tapped in, I don't feel like my weekend is lost or I'm yeah. not rushed or I'm not stressed. I have the P2 yeah. available. And then even if it doesn't happen, then I got an extra long weekend, right? But I wanted to be able to be there for my family and things like that as needed or to be able to offer. Um, and I ended up spending five hours at the veterinary clinic in urgent care. Oh, that's because... right, you did. That's right. <laughs> but what was nice about that is she's perfectly fine. She just <laughs> was uh, uh, using her right to choose <laughs> not to eat because <laughs> she just didn't want to. Um, better now. Um, but I had a whole bag of things that I took with me because I knew what I wanted to work on that day. So like I knew, so I ran my errands right when everything opened in the morning, waited for the vet to call me back. They called me back. My errands were done. They got us an urgent care appointment. So I knew when I was going in, I knew what kind of stuff I had to get done at home that I did before we went. And I knew what kind of stuff I could travel with. And so while I was sitting there with her, right, like I knew I was going to be trapped <laughs> in a small room maybe with internet access, maybe not yeah. for an undetermined amount of time. Right. Um, and that allowed me. And then, you know, because of other stuff like the health stuff or pet stuff or other things. And because I hike and things like that, I had snacks ready to go. Like I knew exactly what I could pack that wouldn't require refrigeration. I had a water bottle already in my car. Right. Like all these little things that I didn't plan to go to the vet that day, but because I, I had a plan in general for if I have to leave quickly, if I have to help with family or something like that, I was ready to draw from. Yeah. And I think, I think that's one of the key things, right? A plan in general, so that you're, you've got those certain, you've got certain things in place that you can always rely on that you're not all of a sudden like spinning in a circle because you can't believe that something happened. It's funny because when I didn't use to plan, when I was more spur of the moment, and then I would make a plan for a day. Like if something happened, like if this would have happened, I don't know, 20 years ago or something, I, I, it, it would have been like, I d wouldn't know what to do with myself. And I would be so disappointed and almost mad. And I'll say that when I, when I heard myself say, do you need me do you want me to take you to the emergency room? There was there. I was fine. Yes. I was worried about him, but it wasn't like I was like, well, there goes my day. And, and actually after I got him dropped off, cause when I picked him up, he was like, I feel better. I'm like, you're still going. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then just I, like it was like, I giggled like, <laughs> yep. Okay. This is happening today. Luckily I can do this. Right. Well, and then some things with the plan that, you know, you don't have to be rigid. It's not a flight plan, right? Like you don't have to do everything you thought of. And yeah. you also don't have to spend a tremendous amount of time making the plan. But just looking a little bit ahead and thinking, what would I do, right? So like I knew my sister was scheduled for a C-section on a Tuesday. And so I let my boss know a week ahead of time, hey, my little sister's having a baby. Our family's really close. If if, you know, one A heads up, if things go wrong, I'm out of here and you're getting no notice, right? You're getting a text while I'm on the way that I have signed off. Um, but if things do go well and they invite people out, um, I've blocked off my afternoon so I can leave for whatever window I'm invited to both Tuesday and Wednesday, right? Like mm -hmm. I'll still work my total hours, but I didn't have to move around meetings because when I heard when her date was, I blocked off time on my schedule as like, focus time, tentative time, time, right? So that whenever she gave birth, I I knew I would have time in my week 
to go and visit her and I wouldn't be disrupting a colleague by, oh, can I reschedule this or disrupting my boss? Like, oh my gosh, I, you know, didn't tell you, but my sister had a baby and now X, Y, Z, and I'm not going to be around. Right. Like, yeah. So So your plan. So, and like you said before, it wasn't this rigid, huge plan. You basically blocked out time and you told your boss yeah, about I prepared it. others. But if you hadn't prepared a plan, you would have actually upset, like, just like we talked about before, other people's plans. Yeah. So just that little easy, simple step of blocking off your calendar. It's, it's amazing what things like that can do for you. I I I always feel stressed, right? I knew, I knew if I wanted, you know, and if something at work came up, I knew what, so that goes back to that choice and freedom piece. I I knew if something came up work, um, how to weigh whether or not to accept it. Right. Or I knew if something did come up and it was really important, I knew, okay, what I'm giving up is this window. I'm, I'm unavailable. And I knew it in advance. It wasn't like I was suddenly going to be disappointed in the moment. Yeah. Um, like that whole uh, freedom piece comes more. Um, I, I know if I don't follow the plan, I know what I'm giving up. Whereas if you don't plan, you don't always realize what you're saying no to or what you're giving up or what you're going to miss out on. Yeah. Because you weren't aware of it or you didn't think about it. And then all of a sudden stuff happened. And like, what if um, you offered to bring him to the hospital or whatever and then realize like, oh crap, I actually had an opportunity to do X, Y, Z, or I needed to do this or I had told someone maybe I'd do this and now I've now committed without fully being aware of of what all could have transpired that day. Right. right? Like you knew exactly what you were giving up when you offered to help. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that made me think of something else, too. And maybe this is getting kind of meta, but it it also made me think about there are times when I'm in my car and I look at the gas tank and I'm like eighth of a t- eighth of a tank. Is right? tomorrow Amy want to deal with this or is today Amy going to deal exactly. with this? Exactly. And, and it's in those moments that I'm like, you know what? I have the time right now to do it. I should do it now. Because what if at that morning he said, can you drive me? And I'm like, oh, but first I have to get gas. And oh, I have to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so it's in those moments too. It's like those little micro plans too, where where you, you want to, I will, sometimes I want to put things off. I feel like I'm getting so much better at that (laughs) because when you don't put them off, when you take care of them right away, you open up more room in your schedule for the plans you might be able to have. (laughs) (laughs) Well, but so that's the piece of it. Like I went to the state fair last year with a group of people. I don't usually do that kind of stuff with, and, um, I'm a planner because if if I'm spending my money and time on something, it's because there's something I want to get out of it. There's something I am interested in. Mm-hmm. And so I'm used to hanging out with people who, you know, say something like the state fair. Um, some of us are really into the new foods and we want to try certain new foods and we want to do it. And then there's other people who tried and true pronto pop or die, right? Like bust, um, like the specific things they want to do. And someone else is really into music and So like we know as a group, by knowing all this about each other, we can we can go to any entrance and we can go in any direction. And because we planned ahead enough to know what everyone wanted to do and where things were, as we're going with the flow of the crowd, we can be like, oh, you wanted a Prano Pup right there. Oh, you wanted the dill pickle pizza. That's there. Right. And we're more we're prepared because we had a plan. And if all of a sudden we're like, oh, we heard about this new thing we didn't know about okay, well, if we go that way, we're not going to be able to get this new thing, which do we want to do more, right? And we can decide if we want to break up as a group or, if you know, we are going to like not do the new thing. That's what I'm used to is a loose plan, right? That like you're, you know what you want to do so that when you're in the area of it, you can do it. Same thing when I, uh, I went to Oregon with a friend, right? And I was like, my biggest pet peeve is spending money on food I'm not excited about. I'm not going to go to a really bad, gross, disgusting restaurant um, because we didn't make a plan. We didn't know it would be in the area and we got too hungry to think about it and figure it out. And so we just walked into the first place. Right. And then you walk out of the place and you turn left and all of a sudden you find this place that you would have (laughs) loved. Right. Like that's my big. And so I tell people that when I travel. Right. 
And so sure enough, then we get places and people are like, oh, I'm just so hungry. And I'm like, oh, but like two more blocks that way. And we're already parked near it. And they're like, let's just go in here. I'm like, oh, no, like this. I know you like banh mi's. And like, oh, they got banh mi's. Yeah, I want to go to that place instead of this crappy Italian restaurant, right? So at the state fair this time, I went with people who plan stress them out and they just wanted to wander. We stayed in the same like block of the state fair for six hours. Like they did not because they kept zigzagging back and forth to things they heard, thought about or realized were there. And we just went in the same little loop. And finally, I'm like, OK, bye, guys. I'm going to go get some food. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm very food motivated. But like because... Like I had a map and I was like, okay, but like, what do you like? Not that like, if we know everybody wants to do X, Y, Z, I now know it's Northwest. And so if some of you don't care what we do and some of you just like to meander, let's just meander Northwest. And then the people who have things they want will get them. And the people who like to meander, you're going to do it anyways. Let me just compass direct you. (laughs) Right. And how did that go over? It did not. (laughs) You can. So. In my experience, the people who are anxious about planning end up dictating what everybody does. And well, and right, to, right, and, because that's what happened to me. Yeah. And I get so frustrated because I am being verbally called the controlling one when they're not realizing that they're actually controlling the situation as well, right? Um, that the plan not again. Planning. Yes. Yeah, so the plan would allow me to be like, oh, yeah, this performer right here is really cool. I don't care if I see that other free concert or comedian down the way I usually see, right? Or, yeah, these noodles look way better than that other place we were going to go to at the world market. Let's get noodles here, right? Like, that's freedom of choice for me. Whereas some people just stop and get the first thing in front of them because choice is overwhelming. And then you walk a little bit further and you realize, oh, I would have liked this more had I known about it. I was like, well, I had a plan for that. (laughs) I don't know. Like road trips, I always, I think it's how well you do with extra information, right? So I always look up every possible thing and it's all in the plan. We're not going to do it all, but like we're ready for it, right? Like we know it exists. Our plan is already from A to B. Let's see what's in between on the way. Right. And I feel like that's, that's kind of how we did Paris. We had a couple key specific things that were, that were very planned out and had to be on certain days at a certain time. And then we had other things that we knew we wanted to see that then were just kind of folded into the plan. Right. But there were, I wish we would have planned out better the restaurants. See, I really wish that had been planned out. And that's where you waste your money is when you don't have a plan because you just, you make the easiest choice. Yeah. And also I think what happened for us is that then it was like, we had a couple restaurants that we went to a few times instead of trying new things. Um, but, but that also was a little bit comforting as well yeah. because we could still try new things at that same restaurant. Right. So yeah. that wasn't too bad, but so I, I feel like, um, sometimes with the plan that sometimes when I plan, my sometimes my brain thinks that I've done it. I have that too. Do I you? Think I think it's an ADD thing because some people are like, just make a to do list and you'll feel less stressed. And I was like, yes, I'll feel less stressed because it's all out of my brain and my brain will not look at the list again. <laughs> right. So, so I do think also then it's more that to rely on that looser plan, right? And not to be like, because I think for my President's Day, it was like bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, (laughs) bullet point, right? Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, I knew exactly what was going to happen. And, And obviously, like I said, it didn't happen. I think the other thing that I just wanted to stress with this, and not stress, but that the ability to pivot, the ability to, to 
to be like, this is okay. It's not going to ruin my day because other things were in place. Right. Yeah. So, so it's almost as if a plan before the plan or the habits before the plan, I don't know, you know, we have, we, we, I don't know if I'd call it a schedule, a plan, a habit, but we clean the house every Sunday morning. You bless the house, Amy. We do. Yes, <laughs> I do. Music is played and, and bells are rung and all kinds of things happen. But because it happens, we plan on it every Sunday. We don't plan other things for Sunday mornings. Yeah. But if someone else plans something, we're also like, that's okay. We can skip a Sunday because we literally do it every Sunday. So I feel then that again, gives us freedom, right? And I think, you know, the biggest difference between someone like me and it, you know, sounds like what you do now, right? Where when you like make a really exacting plan so that you know everything you want to do you can do right like that's a huge thing with me for planning my days it's not so much what am I going to do but managing my own expectations of what I can do because if it's just in my head if I don't make a plan I tend to overburden myself or overestimate what I can do in a day Um, whereas when I use time blocking and all that I just I can't do the time blocking till like the night before the morning of because like we just said sometimes my brain is like check check Um, and And I think some (laughs) people view those things especially if you write it down or if you take the time to do it as you're locked into it and I don't I don't think anybody pivots more than I do from the plan um but again it allows me that freedom okay well if I'm gonna wow I'm really in the zone with crafting you know this podcast outline if I keep at it for another hour okay that means xyz has to move yep that can do it right like whereas maybe I get in the zone and and I didn't have that plan and I just keep working on the podcast and I hyper-focus, hyper-focus. And the next thing I know, whoops, Trader Joe's is closed and I'm not going to have groceries for the week. Right? right. Like, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's the little things like that that kind of add up. But I think people get stressed when they think they don't realize you can pivot. The- right. The plan can pivot. You can pivot. And I also think that people like just what we've talked about, there are hierarchies of plans, right? Yeah. And also sometimes your plan might be how I want to feel today, right? And so maybe it's not, I need to, you know, get this drawer organized and this closet organized and this thing, but maybe I just want to feel as if I'm in a little bit more control of my life. I don't know. (laughs) Would you say for your Monday, you know, just kind of reflecting back on everything you wanted to do, everything you did do, and then your own reflection of it. It, it seems to me like you wanted on President's Day to feel productive. And it sounds like it, you weren't the type of productive you thought you were going to be. But for as chaotic and stressful of the day, you were still productive. You still got movement in. You still, right? Yes. Yeah, you got some socializing done. Right. You helped people. And- I helped people. I was able, I had the ability and the freedom to be able to help and to spend the night and to do all these things. So you're 100% correct. I was productive. 100% correct. Yeah. And when I planned to take my Friday off, I wanted to feel prepared and ready for things to go crazy. Well, guess what? Because I did that, something went a little crazy. I mean, <laughs> and and my day wasn't my own, but I wasn't stressed at all throughout it because um, I'd opened that space. And I think the universe, you know, kind of maybe intuition in a sense for both of us was like, <laughs> something's coming. <laughs> Um, I think it's really funny, though, for someone like me who I love planning and I love planning for other people and I love planning for this podcast, whether or not we do this stuff, right? Like I like the organization of it. Yeah. Like Virgo. Yeah. Um, I tend not to plan things more than a year in advance. Like yeah, even, you told me that or you yeah. told us that or yeah. someone. Even, that is so um, interesting. Even my graduate programs, like I know they're two to three years whenever I sign up for college and I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I'll take it semester by semester. Um, And right now I'm um, helping a friend plan their retirement. They're eligible for it this October. Um, And then because of mostly because they um, don't know what they do with themselves, which I just I was like, retirement is my dream job. I can give you 25 things to do. Right. Like, I can seriously. No, Um, I will be busier in retirement. 
I am And now. then they're yeah. also, you know, and then the other piece is just financially, you know, depending mm-hmm. on when you actually, you know, do it, it could change $700 by a matter of just working three more months, right? Yeah. So I've been helping them through it. And just the irony of me not planning more than a year in advance, but trying to get someone to plan an entire season of their life of retirement is just hilarious to me. But I was recently, they were talking it through and part of their roadblock is, you know, four or five years ago when we first started um, our accountability partnership together, they had a very specific vision for retirement, what it would look like. And two or three years ago, they realized they didn't want that anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then now they're kind of playing with aspects of it, or maybe I want this, but not this. And um, so it was funny because I just looked at them and I was like, hey, we're grownups. We got grown up money. We got grown up time. We got grown up things. We can decide right here and now what you're going to do during <laughs> retirement. And you get to change your mind. <laughs> we, you can plan the whole thing, do it for three weeks, and then go get a job. Like, like get a part time but you could do um you could go and get an rv you could decide you do want to sell the house you could move to california you could do so many things uh but we're grown-ups you could retire and you could still just retire in october and say screw you future me (laughs) i'm out of here right and then you know a couple weeks passed and then recently they're like okay this is the date i'm gonna retire financially everything like this is the date hold me accountable to this and i was like it's a bit more in the future than than we've talked about. What if X Y Z happens at work, you know? And I knew it would be like, a, this is done for me kind of moment. I'm not working here anymore. And then he's like, Why would you say that? Why would you say that out loud? Why would you say that to me? And I was like, I want you to plan for it. I want you to have in your head that that is it could happen. So I think I think it is really interesting. I think they're two separate things, being able to help somebody else plan for their future than it is planning out your future. But I will say whenever somebody says like, where do you see yourself in five years? I'm like, no, I don't think you understand. I'm not (laughs) planning out that like, that'll be something completely different. I'm the same way. I I want it to be like one year. Five years from now. Exactly. Nothing but the pivot. I'll be like (laughs) Ross and friends just screaming pivot. (laughs) I'm all about being kind to the person you will be tomorrow, but the w- person I will be in 10 years, I don't know you. You can be, you, you're on your own. You got to figure that out. Right. Well, we're not the people that we were even five years ago. Right? Of course not. Of course not. So I completely get that mm-hmm. and love it. I love that you changed the plan for this episode. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, if this episode also spoke to your soul, please share it with a friend. And if you have time, give us some love on your preferred platform with a rate, review, and subscribe. You can also reach out to us via Instagram and YouTube under The Brightly Podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com. We hope you plan on having a bright and beautiful day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.